Hey, what's up, gang? So Rob Manfred had his press conference a little earlier today. I wanted to wait a little while until I got more details from it. Um, you know, do I feel a lot better than I did before? No, maybe a little bit because of some of the things that I agreed upon today, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff that you know we're getting, you know, uh, corporate spin, you know, and just not not being that transparent about it. And, and one of the things, obviously, is you know pre-arbitration players, and they've already said that their proposal, which is coming this Saturday, they're meeting with the players' union on Saturday, and they're going to give their counter proposal. And uh, what Manfred was kind of talking a little bit about today, um, and he's saying it's significantly better than the the, the current, the recently expired. Uh, collective bargaining agreement. So <clears throat> in some ways it sounds like it is, but they're still not, you know, dealing with some of the major contentious issues that are important to the players union. Now, with that said, you know, they've already, you know, said that they've agreed to raise the minimum salary for a pre-arbitration player in their, with, with zero to one, basically your first time coming up to the majors and with zero to one year experience, but they still need to raise the next two levels of pre-arb. There are three years of pre-arb and then three years of ARB. And it sounds like they've only raised the first one. And they've raised it. They're willing to raise it from 570 to I think 615 thousand, which is not enough. And they have to raise the next two levels. So that's one of the two things, um, one of the many things that still needs to be resolved. Now, <clears throat> Manfred said today they've agreed to uh, institute a draft lottery, which is essentially to discourage teams from tanking, which is a good thing. And because uh, I hate the fact that teams tank and then they get, you know, they get essentially revenue sharing money from. Uh, big market teams, and they generally don't use it on players, obviously, because they keep tanking. And maybe this will discourage them from tanking because maybe the worst teams won't always get the top picks anymore and still tank. So that's one of the things. The next thing, they've agreed to universal DH. So that's happening in 2022, So, which could be good for the Yankees because it essentially increases trade value for guys like Luke Voigt, Miguel Andujar, and, and maybe even Gary Sanchez. And whatever, if they do trade them, the prospects they could get back in trades – uh, could be essentially flipped to other teams, you know, added to a Matt Olson trade, added to whatever else, if, should they do those things. So, um, and again, Luke Voigt's got three controllable years left. So does Miguel Andujar. They're all three arbitration years are still ahead of them. So, which is, that, that's good value. And if they stay healthy, that's really good. That's great value. <clears throat> um, that's the other thing. And they've also agreed to uh, eliminating uh, draft pick compensation. So, and it sounds as if, you know, players attached to a qualifying offer will not, will no longer be attached to draft pick compensation. So you won't have to give up your second round draft pick or whatever it is um, to sign a guy. And which also could put the Yankees in, in, in a favorable light. And other teams too, because if the Yankees sign, let's just say the Yankees sign Carlos Correa. Now they don't have to forfeit a draft pick. Now I don't know about international spending money because he didn't mention that. We have to see what's going to happen there, but... This could benefit teams like the Yankees and the Dodgers and, and some of the big market teams and even small smaller market teams as well. So, but that's what we know right now. Those are the three things he mentioned. And again, he was obviously dodging some other questions too. So it still remains to be seen what this counter proposal is going to look like and eventually what they agree upon. You know, he was also cagey when it t came to starting the season on time or starting spring training on time. So he, on, one, on one token, he said he expects it to start with no interruption. Then he said, uh, you know, we, we just need four, we need at least four weeks of spring training. So uh, you know, alluding to the fact that it may start and potentially start in March. And keep in mind, whenever this thing gets agreed upon, teams have to fill out their rosters. And then these guys have to do physicals. They have to sign. They have to do all this stuff. That takes time too. So do I think this regular season is going to get pushed back a little bit? Yes, I do. How long? I don't know. Maybe two weeks. But... Um, so I, I, it, that's my gut's telling me. I hope the gut's wrong, but um, it sounds as if you know, he obviously doesn't want to say that yet, but it sounds as if spring training is going to be pushed back and the regular season is going to be pushed back uh, with a little bit less games. And again, I may have to hit, you know, hit the owners in those pockets, and obviously don't want to do that because they want to maximize their returns profitably-wise, but there's a lot, there was a lot of corporate spin today, and again, you know, sometimes they need to wake up when their pockets start to get drained a little bit, and maybe that needs to happen, because it will hit their pockets. I mean, that's no parking, that's no concessions, that's no merch, that's no ticket sales for, even if it's 20 less games, that's going to hit, that's a lot of money, a lot and lot of money, but anyway, that's what happened today, and uh, if anything else happens, I'll keep it coming. I will I'll obviously put out a video on Saturday once the counter proposal from the MLB owners is out. And we know exactly what the details are. You'll know about that tune, uh, soon. And then uh, 
and then we'll talk about it on Saturday night on the live stream. So I'm hoping to see you guys there. And again, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so you don't miss any of these updates, especially after this lockout's over. Talk to you next time.